orchids. It's the world's second largest plant family. And as Africa, we have no shortage of native orchids. We have some epiphytic orchids, those are the ones that grow in the trees, and then we have terrestrial orchids, they grow in the soil. Now today I found a gorgeous terrestrial orchid. They're not very rare, they grow all the way from Azerfontein on the west coast, right around South Africa, east coast up to Zimbabwe. And they flower now, it's summertime. And when Darwin saw one of these dried specimens of this orchid in London, he said it's one of the most profoundly modified orchid specimens he's ever seen. Now imagine he's seeing this plant in real life like we're doing now. And here it is. This is Bonatia speciosa, or the green wood orchid. It's a very large terrestrial orchid. And when this orchid is in flower, I mean, you can't really miss it. Now orchids are an ancient plant group and they're a very intricate and complicated plant group because if you look at it, look at all of those um, elements to the flower, lots of petals, almost spider-like, and all of those modifications to the flower, that is there to attract the pollinator and it's exactly what it's about to do. Dusk is upon us now and when that happens, the scent starts to change and get stronger. It's a very distinguishable jasmine scent and the darker it gets the stronger the scent will be and that is to attract its pollinator and that is the hawk moth. Now the hawk moth has a long enough proboscis to go into the flower, drink the nectar which is right at the back of the flower. But you see that long tube at the back, the nectar is held in there. And that proboscis or tongue of the hawk moth needs to go all the way down. Now, when the hawk moth visits this flower, this flower is very clever. Now, I'm gonna try and mimic that. So, here we go. So the hawk moth puts his proboscis in, and there we go. And the little pollinia, or the pollen, gets stuck onto the forehead of the hawk moth. Now, the hawk moth flies off to another flower to drink more, and when it does that, this touches the stigma, which is the female part of the flower. And then you'll see the pollen rub off onto the female part. And so pollination happened, and this plant will now set seed. Now the hawk moth flies off, and this is quite irritating to it because it's a whole new part to his body. And it will fly off onto a little stick like this and then try and get it off. And here it is. There are some just close by. It's where the hawk moth removed this weird adaptation it got from the orchid. But the orchid's happy. It got pollinated and the hawk moth got fed.